this is basically the end of Under the Volcano, backwards. And if you know the book, which I presume you all do, it's where um, Jeffrey has been shot and he flies up and enters the volcano. And uh, because this is backwards, this is the beginning. So this is Jeffrey coming back to life. And we've never done it before. <laughs> Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what happens then. Before him, the dead dog flew out of the ravine into someone's arms. Rejecting pity, the closed huddled trees opened from over him to form a sparser crowd and moved back, throwing a rising scream from one tree to another until their crescendo was suddenly swallowed down into his mouth. Rising out of a forest, rising through 10 million burning bodies blazing, through the inconceivable million tanks of pandemonium, with himself rising through it all, black torrents plummet past him, down from space to create a galvanized plain of jetsam villages. The world was establishing itself, a volcano reasserting dormancy, his ears refusing the hisses from retreating trails of hardening lava snakes. He must have been down in it before all this. He was rising, rising from the volcano as at the same time it, whatever it was, was forming and solidifying. This summit that is not exactly a summit as it has no firm base, no substance. There will be something soon. Peaks, life climbs. His eyes closed to see all those attractive peaks of his life. The Cofre de Perote, Malinque, Pico de Orizal, that will later conquer him one before the other after this successful, if unconventional, beginning of the greatest descent of all into the depths of the magnificent jungle. Strong hands sent him down. He has stepped off the summit. Ah, oh, Yvonne, sweetheart, I will undo my faults to take your love. How could he have thought so evil of the world when succor was at hand all the time? They will say, no way. which will explain everything. He will repeat, you can't love without life. Hugh and Yvonne's minds would be unsettled about him without the addition of Jacques and Vigil's friendly voices. Racing downhill past the timberline from the peak, and this was certainly one way to get away from there in an ambulance shrieking through the jungle itself. Ah, as a starter, he was being returned to danger. Voices and the sound of laughter ceased. Cleared ears, clarified thoughts. Without the aid of a good Samaritan, he was being born on the roadside. Even if they could, no one will help him. He rose from the ground, energized and self-sufficient. He will go far. Though he was lightening his load of confusions, packed at Fausto Hotel, a coat pocket protruding a jar of rice, pockets spilling nuts, raisins, and dried prunes. A wool cap to be pulled off to free ears, mittens, alpenstock, yet to be sealed snow goggles. Painless, alone, 
he skipped down the slope of the foothills away from Amakamaka. He suspected they were now well ahead of Popocata Petal and the descent from it. And with this, Yvonne and Hugh appeared. Words muttered into a voice, In Mexico, the speeders take our bullets. Everything suggests spiders and spikes are everywhere, Yvonne proffered. You do right to take care. His ears pricked Hugh's words. Has Bougainville ever picked you? They would soon fall back. From descending Popocata Petal with Yvonne and Hugh, he suddenly returned remarkably to the Himalayas, among trefoil and violets, near running water lying in the meadows. He knew he was in Kashmir. The sound of cries making love mingled with the distant clamor of a waterfall and the half-recovered sounds of a guitar of chords. England. In the 17th century in England, heard from far away a clavichord. Bach? There was a Bach-like quality to it. No, it was something funereal. Gluck, perhaps, from Alcestis. Finale of the D minor quartet that entered Moses. The Siciliana. Let it be. Let it be, let it be, Mozart! He heard the music and then listened carefully to accompanying thoughts drifting through his mind. Happiness made him, better feelings led him, receiving the title Compañero, comrade, equal. His head unbalanced an abstraction, that was closest yet to a potential reality. It hid under three or two little bowler hats. Disguises he may choose to wear if meaningless muddled ideas should press gang him, steal him into a life that shrinks from him, take him to be the pelado, vagrant scum. Hugh's word for the thief. His whole consciousness bailed out the word pelado. The insult flew from him to someone else. Then the old fiddler had appeared. He began, Compañero. Stooping over him, it was a mask of compassion, a shining face disappearing into the gloom. Or will there be no one? Where was everybody? He was alone, flowing out of the tenderness of the grass. He could feel life slivering into him like liver. Merely curious, perhaps, or to help, trying to fill his pockets, holding his hand. Shapes hovered by him. Softly, rain was rising. Dolore, pain, dolente, painfully. A bell listened in. His face flat on the grass. With a groan, he got up onto one knee. Puzzled, he remarked. Christ, this is a dingy way to resurrect. Thank you.